Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from my tech keyboards and today we're taking a look at a new keyboard from a new company or at least new to me. Now I did uh, come across their listing on Amazon about a couple weeks ago and I reached out to them and I was like hey could I take a look at one of your keyboards and they asked which one I was like which one do you think is best. That's I like when I ask companies for a review unit I prefer that they pick the keyboard instead of me just picking the keyboard um, in hopes that they're going to give me what you know they expect to be one of their better ones so they did they sent me out the n60 the nova n60 from ranked now um like i said they're a new company they're based out of delaware so i don't know if they're u.s based but they did send this to me through amazon shipping so and they included some uh, goodie goodie packs <laughs> or goodie pack um, I've got a lube accessory kit, a CNC aluminum switch opener, accessories. I'm not sure what that is, but we're going to open all these up here in a second. They also were kind enough to send some premium palm jelly caps, and we'll take a look at this in a minute as well. The star of the show today is the Nova N60, 60% mechanical from Ranked. Now, I'm not sure what switches I got, but they are hot swaps of switches. Now, I, I did open it up to inspect it, make sure all was good, and I noticed one thing that I did not notice before, and I think this is game-changing, and I'm hoping that the keyboard matches the features. So, you know, I figured, hey, it's just a 60% keyboard, you know, 32-bit mm -hmm. ARM processor with support for QMK and VIA. <laughs> now, I mean, where have we gotten, you know, in the under hundred dollar pre-built keyboards that come you know with its own firmware that seems pretty nice but also with the choice of qmk via now that to me is perfection okay so somebody doesn't want to mess with qmk or via cool it got software that works just fine it actually looks a step up and i'll be taking a look at that as well it looks like a step up from most configuration software from say rk or skyloon or Epo maker but to have the option in your keyboard to go and load up qmk but also have a tap mode i mean obviously qmk has a tap mode as well as by it yeah by it is as well but to have it in closed source software so it's using a 32-bit arm a co -prop. it's using a 32-bit arm uh, mcu or microcontroller unit so i mean it says arm processor is it? A, well, I guess, I mean, it's an MCU. So, um, everything else with pulling rate of uh, 1000 hertz. The RGB effects look pretty good on here. And lubricate prelude stabilizers, deeper acoustics. All right. So, let's open this. I'll see what we have. As far as accessories go, we have a nice wire keycap puller. Better use these than those plastic ring ones. Those plastic ring ones can scratch the sides of the keycaps. And then we have a nice switch puller. Um, these are, in some situations, they're better. It depends on how you pull switches. I kind of prefer the double sided ones, but these I've worked with and they can be pretty good. And we got your, oh, it's not, well, it's a little bit thicker than your standard USB-A to USB-C cable, as well as a quick start guide. And they do have quite a few layouts already, um, ANSI and ISO, and a lot of different countries in ISO. So here's the star of the show, the Nova N60 from Ranked. And Ranked is spelled R-A-N-K-E-D, just in case. Um, now I've gotta say, it initially gave me our cases. So I'm gonna go ahead and interrupt myself. <laughs> um, I just had to, I, it had been bugging me. I was like, God, I've seen this case before. I really feel that I have, and uh, I had. So uh, the plate is not the same. This is the Skyloon uh, GK61, which has the, uh, the split space bar uh, module. Over here, so it can be replaced with this to give you um, split space bars. Anyway, I just uh, 
I remember looking at it and I was like, yeah. So it's probably coming out of the same factory. Now, like I said, the PCB is different and, and this doesn't come with any padding whatsoever, whereas the rank does. But it was uh, it was kind of bugging me since I, I filmed it and um, I'm actually editing the review video right now. Hi, future me. I mean, wow. Okay. <laughs> Let's see what we've got under here. Oh, it looks like we've got the yellows, and this would be the yellow pros. All right. Yeah, this definitely looks like the yellow pros. Hmm. There is a little bit of ping to speak of, but just the tiniest amount. Huh. This one seems a little more frosted than a regular yellow. So when we look down here, all right. We don't have a PE foam pad or IPXE pad, so that's one mod we can already do to it. We do have some really nice thick foam between the plate and the PCB, and there seems to be some fairly thick open cell foam down below the PCB. Oh yeah, it's pretty thick. Hmm. So well, that's definitely doing its job of curiosity. Alright, we're going to open up the goodie bags while we're here. Because I'm going to lube up just one switch just to see the difference. Well, hey, we've got some EVA pads, speaking of. And we've got, oh, some tweezers. I can never have enough tweezers. <laughs> but we have some EVA pads. I usually get the Poron or the PE. So, oh, those do feel nice. Though, I'm going to guess these are going to be more towards mute, muting the sound than anything else. All right, so that's what we get in the accessory pack. Make sure there's nothing else in there. All right, so let's take a look at the lube accessory kit, which I just tore open. All right, we get a set of straight. Oh, we got a paintbrush. We get the grippers. Another paintbrush. Oh, an even bigger puller. Huh. I guess my only question here would be, why didn't I get some lube with it? <laughs> I thought maybe there'd at least be a, um, you know, a little packet of grease, a little packet of oil. Uh, though, I mean, I guess, I don't know. I, I just, that's what I would have assumed, the lube kit, that it would include lube, not just the accessories to lube with, but actually even if it's just a small packet. But that's neither here nor there. I mean, I wasn't even expecting these, so our nice little gift. Oh, it's one of these. I like these. So we've got a, so we've got a total of three switch pullers, <laughs> and we've got a, um, Nice aluminum, CNC aluminum um, double switch opener. So we're going to be able to open both Gatoron style with the legs and um, Kale style with the, the wing latch. All right, so I just want to do this real quick. That's some of my handy dandy grease. I'm just going to basically swirl one side of it on the outside. And this is just for paint reverberation. Yeah, because I was, I mean, I, if these are pros, though, I don't know if they're pros or not, because there's a little bit of ping, and with the pros, I'm used to not hearing any ping. Oh, that's in there. All right. That really holds on to the switch. Come on. Can I have the switch back, please? All right. Yeah, I, I don't see any signs of lubrication. Yeah, it must be just a regular yellow because I don't see any signs of lubrication. So, that part of the window does definitely look frostier. 
but I don't think I noticed that. I don't know. These could be the 2.0s, but... I definitely got rid of it. It wasn't that bad of a ping. It's just a slight ping. But they're definitely not lubricated. So they must have just sent me over the regular yellows, which are fine. Yellow is probably one of my favorite linear. Though I, I really like the milky yellow. Alright, well, that was just a... Just something for me to keep my ear on when I, when I do the sound test. So you guys can remember that I did the escape. I'm curious what they're going to sound like with the EVA. But I think what we will be doing today will be something different. I'll definitely be coming back to it because um, I think I want to do the PE foam mod on it. But let's plug it in and see what the lights look like. Those are nice and bright. It'll take a second to boot up, but that's fine. Well, it definitely has some uh, very nice effects. And the RGB is definitely well, well lit. Yeah, those are some very bright RGB. Some of the brightest probably that I've seen. Let's see about these keycaps. Because they do actually sound like they're definitely more than one millimeter. Alright, we are zeroed out. Yep, 1.3. 1.3 millimeters. Yep. That's where our hole is at. That's a pretty good width. Um, took a look at a keyboard the other day. It sounded pretty good and there were 1.0. So, I like that these are a little bit thicker than your average Joe. Yep. I really got to stop doing that when I'm connected. <laughs> so this is a wired only. And of course, you know, we got the function rows up here. I got to say, that's, um, that's pretty bright. That's some of the brightest RGB that I've seen. I mean, I've got all the lights turned on in here. I've got like eight different lights. And it's bright, and I see it no problem. And the shine through is pretty good. All right, let me take a look at the palm keycaps they sent Hoping this is the ones that I saw. But yes. <laughs> All right. These are the palm keycaps that I saw. So we've got three trays of keycaps here. We even have um, the space bar splits uh, for Alice keyboards. We've got ISO. We've got keycaps for just about every size you could want. Pretty complete keycaps, so I've got to say. Oh, these are nice. They feel just um, like a plastic marble. Plastic marble top, if that makes any sense. They're really smooth, almost silky. How thick are these? These are 1.5. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I'm pretty sure these are going to sound... Definitely louder. Um, I'm going to leave that one there for right now. Hmm. So these should work even with south facing then. Um, obviously it's getting blocked there. These are some of the more interesting keycaps I've seen in a little while. So I'm liking them a lot. And again, we have the ability to do the PE phone mod. If I had a little more time, I'd probably do it today, but I will do it soon because I'm liking 
this keyboard and these keycaps. Let's get technical. Today we are taking a look at the ranked Nova N60, a 60% wired keyboard that comes pre-built from ranked.gg. It weighs in at 555 grams. It MSRPs for $69.99 or $59.99 on Amazon.com. It comes with PBT double shot Cherry Profile keycaps and also has tap functionality, debounce, and NKRO. The chin of this keyboard sits at 22 millimeters while the back sits at 31.5, providing a typing angle of 7 degrees. This keyboard does come with proprietary firmware and software, though the box says QMK and VIA support, there is no source tree as of yet. So, um, took a look at this keyboard, took a look at its software, but I've got, I gotta say, one, one big issue with this. If you guys look at the box, and it's on the website as well, 32-bit ARM processor with support for QMK VIA. What do you assume that means? That there is a QMK VIA firmware available, correct? Well, that's not the case. Apparently, they're still working on it. They have no way of reverting back to the original firmware. I did not see any source files. I asked for them. Uh, I was given a PNG of the key matrix, which, I mean, I don't know if they were asking me to write a QMK for it. Now, while the closed source software for this is pretty full featured, um, it has TAP, which is one of the first closed source software packages that I, that I believe that I've come across that has that TAP functionality. Well, I'll, I'll include shots of the software um, in here, you know, showing that it does have per key RGB, and you can customize a lot of the effects. Um, you got function one, function two layers, as well as a tap layer. Um, and the tap layer is basically, you know, you select a key, you, what you want it to do, and, you know, you're hitting on it, just tapping uh, 200 milliseconds, I, or 300 milliseconds, I believe it is, but you can set that delay in case you don't type that fast, you can set it maybe 800 milliseconds. Rarely seen, if at all, I'm trying to recall any that have that, and I believe there was one other one that I saw that had in the software actually it looked similar, but I can't, it, it's not jumping out to me at the moment. So, um, so yeah, while the software that it comes with is, is fairly complete, the keyboard is not bad stock. It really, it, it's, because of the keycaps, um, switches are decent. I mean, there is a, a slight amount of ping. They say, I don't know if I got the yellow Pro or just the regular Gator on yellow. Oh, no, no, never mind. I never looked at the, uh, there it is. All right, so these do have Gator on Pro yellow. Yeah, I do see the slightest amount of lube on there. I mean, the slightest. But, it's only on the rail stem. Yep, the film seems to be only on the rail stem because the, the spring is bone dry. Yeah, there's nothing on the spring. So, software is nicer than most other ones but we're still dealing with a um, at the end of the day we are still dealing, dealing with a steel plate it does have good dampening uh, between the plate and the PCB and it does have a good amount of foam in the case like I said it really doesn't sound bad stock now do note that I did the H and the E I just dipped them in a little bit of grease just to get rid of that spring pain. So, hardware wise, this keyboard is on the right path. Had they added a polycarbonate plate instead of a steel plate, not only do I think that would have made a huge difference for the sound profile, I think it would have sounded much more stockier out of the box. Um, I think it would just make all the difference in the world. Now, I will be coming back to this. I'll do a test with the palm keycaps and then um, 
I'll probably do one switching out the switches. So I, I'll be coming back to it because I do want to play with it. And I'm, I'm going to maintain a little bit of hope that QMK and BIA will actually become available for this keyboard. But I'm not going to hold my breath. Um, so, but hardware-wise, like I said, it has a lot of similarities to RK boards. But uh, it is slightly different. I am curious to get in there and see what the PCB and I know what the MCU is because they sent it to me by email. So they're using a 7203 MCU. And they sent me the pinouts of it as well as the matrix, which is uh, it's pretty simple. 10 columns, five rows. So, but not much I can do with this. This is a pretty decent keyboard. It has features that other keyboards in, in this price range. Although this is on the higher end. The I Love B, I think lists for $34 or $39, but has been on sale for as low as $17. A lot of us picked some up. I picked up a couple. Um, now this one is still stock. Actually, yeah, the other one I already modded, but before I even had a chance to film it, my kid took it. So, obviously these aren't stock keycaps, but they're about the same. Now this keyboard stock is not bad. This one is better. I will say the rank does sound better, but with very little effort, this keyboard turns into better sounding than that stock. This keyboard is $17. It has software. It has per key RGB. Um, it has basic remapping and macros. So this one is $59.99. Now it has better software, but it's supposed to also have QMK Via. With QMK Via, okay. That's a $60 keyboard, no problem. Without it, it should drop down into the $30 to $40 price range. But that's that's just my opinion. Anyway, I'm, I'm trying to not go off too much in the weeds, though I do want to educate, and I still am working. I'm working on two series. One that's going to be just one video is um, going over the current keyboards in certain um, sizes, you know, from 60 all the way up to... Well, 1800s, 96%, uh, just to kind of give you guys a, a video of what options are out there right now. And I'm also working on a series that's going to be several videos, but I'm not going to release them until they're all ready uh, because it won't make sense because it's going to be like a video tutorial series, a, a beginner's guide to keyboards. Any, everything from layouts to switches to mounting styles uh, to software, all of it. But it's going to be high level and some of them some of the chapters that i need to get more deep level will go into a longer video that goes into more detail but basically it's going to be like one overview video with several chapters eight to twelve chapters i still haven't figured out how i'm grouping everything together and each of those chapters will go into its own video that goes into a lot of detail about those topics talked in that chapter so that's going to take me a little while to get going i am almost uh ready for to start filming the uh, right, this weekend, I'll be starting to film the series of keyboards available in 2023. I don't know what I'm going to name it yet, but uh, if you guys have any suggestions of a keyboard that I have not yet looked at, you think belongs on a you know keyboards to buy in 2023 or at least the first half, um, please shoot them my way. Uh, if I'm sure that I'm going to miss some keyboards, I'm going to try to do my best to include keyboards I think that are worth you know worthwhile, worth the time, and priced well. So, right now I'm just going to go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test of the ranked Nova N60. But I will be doing at least a, another sound test here shortly um, with the Palm keycaps they sent because they, those are nice. I, I like I like how they look. I'm actually interested to see them on a couple of different keyboards and see. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.